Hello there. Greetings to you, my friends around the world. I welcome you to another edition of uh, Mentoring with Bola Adewara. Recently, we discussed um, mentoring, I mean the church, as a mentor. Today, we want to look at spousal mentoring. Mentoring the spouse. How the husband can mentor the wife and how the wife can also mentor the husband. Have you ever been mentored? I mean really mentored. That means that someone takes you under their wings and uh, then coaches, guide, counsel, trains and leads you forward. Could be in sports, in music, in business, in spiritual matters, in life. A lot of people don't really understand that mentoring can take place in specific areas like this. In most instances, this mentoring is done one-to-one -one between two men or between two women. Usually, a seasoned person mentors a younger one, passing along wisdom, experience, advice, education, and encouragement. And it's good for the mentee as well as the mentor as both benefit from the sharing uh, emotional connection and feelings of uh, helpfulness and being helpful. It is within this construct that spousal mentoring is uh, desirable between couples. When a couple is not measuring up to the expectation of the other couple, Rather than uh, allowing that to degenerate to disappointment, bitterness, scornful, separation and divorce, one could rise to the occasion to mentor the other. All it takes is determination, patience. Today, I want to address a different type of mentoring. That is a mentoring your spouse. This is one of the most delicate mentoring because marriage has made uh, marriage has made two I mean the two people husband and wife to become one, and where oneness is involved, there is always a factor of disrespect, underrating one another. I mean I can imagine the husband saying that you want my wife to mentor me, are you kidding me, or uh, the the wife will say, um, you want my husband to mentor me? Can my husband mentor me? My husband? From where? From the beer parlor? Because most women feel the husband is not always, uh, always around. Sincerely, the husband can mentor the wife and the wife can mentor the husband. All it takes uh, is tact, patience and determination. It is easier for the man to mentor his wife because the Bible expects the wife to submit to her husband. For the husband to be mentored by the wife, it takes tact. It might not be the direct mentoring where you give him orders or supervising. I will explain how you can, how the wife can mentor the husband. I will give two examples of this, which I've seen in the course of my research when I was uh, doing this book, uh, Discover the Secret of Mentoring. Now, let us look at mentoring your spouse. In Ephesians uh, chapter 5, 22 and, uh, to 23 uh, verses, uh, the Bible clearly states that wives are to submit to their husbands as they do to the Lord. And husband, husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church. This is not to say that both the wife uh, and the husband cannot have a significant influence on the spiritual development of each other. In explaining this, I want to rely on the, on the writing of uh, a man I read his book some time ago. His name is uh, Michael Griego. In his publication in Biblical Viewpoint, he identifies three key ways for both husband and wife to mentor each other. One way, number one, is Know your spouse. No, the no I'm talking about is not the biblical in the biblical sense, but in the true sense of knowing the depth of your spouse in the following area. 
you know, much like SWOT, you know, in a, in, in business, I mean, we call something SWOT, um, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The issue is this, how many of us do the SWOT analysis of our spouse? Do you actually know the strength of your wife or of your spouse? Do you actually know the weaknesses of your spouse? Do you actually know the opportunities when it when it's available? And do you actually tell your wife of such opportunities? And do you know the threat facing your wives? Let's look at strength. Let's start from the S. You know, SWOT is S W O T. Let's start from S. Strength. Know what your spouse is really good at. They are called wheelhouse strength that shine and come so natural to them. This is God-given and humanly developed. It is a great source of assurance and confidence. You see, when you know the strength of your wife, it's something you can rely on her. Oh, I know my wife is good in this area. I know my wife can do this. You can market your wife when you see what she can do. I have seen men who will go at any later to start telling people that, look, my wife is a good singer. Try her. Come and listen to the voice of my wife and you will see angel singing. I'm going somewhere. Let's look at the number one, the number two. That is the weakness, the weaknesses. Know their real vulnerabilities. The soft underbelly that is such a source of pain and fear. Often the spouse is the only one who knows that the depth of the weaknesses of the woe of the wife? You see her, you know her, you live together. You certainly know the weaknesses of the wife. If a friend knows more, then the intimacy can be missed or lost. The third one is opportunities. Know where your spouse can shine and be successful. Determine to help them see the opportunities or the possibilities and potentials to rise up out of holes and depth of despair. Sometimes you are the only one that can see the forest through the eyes. You have the perspective to help your spouse see beyond the gritty details. The opportunities are available. They, I keep asking some of our people, in what way have you contributed to the lives of your husband or the lives of your wife? All of us should look at it. Since you married that lady, since you married that man, what can you say you have added to his life? What have you added to the life of your spouse? Some of the men we have there, maybe, I marry, maybe, I, maybe the man marries the wife uh, with, uh, maybe with, with BA. Have you, the wife, ever told him to go for a master's program? Have you, the wife, found something good outside and say, look, my husband, I think you need to do this. And that is why you find a lot of people with first degree. And that is where they end it. Sometimes, you know, very few will say, oh, I'm going for my master's degree. Oh, I'm going for my PhD. The same thing with women. Some women will say, no, I'm not going beyond. I will read. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, I have my first degree. When I get to my husband's house, I will go for my master's. I will go for my PhD. That is where it ends. Most women end their education there. You, husband, in what way have you contributed to the development of your wife ever since you got married to her? What opportunities have you shown her? The last one is the threat. Know the key point of exposure, both in people and in situation. Be the safe one, one who protects, shields, and covers. Yes, a wife can do this for her husband. Yes, the wife too can do that. Certainly, the husband should make the world safe for the bride of his youth and help navigate waters to safe harbor. Everybody has a threat in their life. Everybody has their Achilles heel. Every one of us. We come into marriages with challenges. You know, when you want to marry a man, how many of us will sit the man down? Or you sit the wife down and tell them that, look, in my family, 
we have these challenges. We don't we don't succeed easily. We don't do this easily. It's difficult for us to make hay in life, that kind of thing. But have you ever found that on your own that look, I found something in the life of my wife. How can I help her? Yes, we are learning that mentoring your spouse takes a lifetime to master. And it's best when the master himself is in the life of the man. Now, I want to show you from experience how men could mentor, how a spouse could mentor the other spouse. While I was doing this uh, book and doing my research, I went to a friend and he told me, I mean, the lady told me, look, my husband does not read. We are always having issues in my marriage because um, I don't just know. I have a husband who will not read. I have a husband who will not go to church. They went to see a counselor somewhere. And the counselor said, why don't you uh, introduce your husband to some books? Let him read books on marriage and stuff. The man said, my husband? He would rather be in Biapalo or he would be somewhere watching up Man U, um, up uh, Chelsea, you know, the football, the, what do you call them, the European uh, stuff. Now, the counselor told the wife, gave the wife what we call a dasi here in Nigeria, a kind of a, kind of a brainwave. And the lady, he told the lady, the counselor told the lady, when you get home, when you know your husband is around of stuff like that, there's no play match. Buy some books for the children. Let the children start reading this book by 7. Let it be a religious thing in your home. 7 p.m. Everybody must have a book they must read. All the five children have a book each. And everybody will come to the parlor, the living room. And they'll be reading. The wife too will pick one book and they'll be reading. The husband will just be rolling around the at, at the stage. After about two weeks of continuously doing this, the husband just shouted, ah, you people, you are just reading books and you are not even inviting me to read. What book can I even read? Now, look at it. The man confessed with himself that, look, what book can I read? All of you are reading. You know, the way they do it, they will read the book and then they will sit together and they will start talking. This one will talk about what he has read. This next child will talk about what he has read. This one will talk about what he has read. And you find all of them laughing in the family. And the man will just be looking at the family. He, he felt left out. Now, the wife has prepared a book um, what is that to um, 20 ways to treat her as a lady you know and then she kept the book so when the man complained that all of you are reading books where is my own book to read then they brought the, husband, the wife brought one more a book out and gave to the husband and this is that day the man just started reading you mean at seven o'clock all of them said reading time reading time and the husband too picked the book and then he started reading the book 20 ways to treat her as a lady and it was like, wow. He started reading and seeing how he could treat his wife. Unknown to him that this was a setup. Look, this is what I'm saying that, look, you can mentor your husband even without him knowing. It's not that kind of regular mentoring. But you have a way of making him do things. And then the man started reading the book. After he finished reading the book, the lady told me that after about uh, maybe a month of reading the book, the man came home someday and then he said, baby, let's go out. Let's go out. Let me take you out. You know, he started from what he read in the book. Joy returned to the house. Joy returned to the house because the man read just one book. Now, you can imagine that kind of mentoring, indirect mentoring. He eventually, he turned the man into a reader of books. When the man finished reading that book, the man said, look, can you give me another one like that book? You can imagine what has happened. These are some of the things that, you, that uh, you, you can do as a wife to mentor your husband. Let me give you how the husband could mentor the wife. Um, I, there's a pastor, I don't want to mention her name here, who told us a story. Long time, I mean, she, she said this all over the television when she was preaching, she's got to be with the Lord now, that my husband is my mentor. She said, when we started the church, I do not uh, know what to do in the church. I was always following him to the church and he would always be speaking, be preaching. And one day my husband said, look, why don't you find something to do? Start speaking to the youth in the church. And it was like, you want me to start speaking with the youth in the church? What do you want me to say? Then the husband started. 
made some jottings, write down things for her and stuff. And that's how the lady started. Eventually, she became a phenomenon in Nigeria. In fact, across Africa. People started knowing, wow, this woman is good. This woman, I'm sure some of you could guess the very, very person I'm talking about, but she's going to be with the Lord now. Everywhere she goes and she's, she was given an award, she would say, look, this award is for my husband. Because all that I'm doing today, he mentored me. He pushed me into doing all these things. Husband, I want to assure you, don't give up on your wife. Wife, let me assure you, don't give up on your husband. There are so many ways you can bring happiness back into your home. Of course, I know that some of these things, it looks so easy, but then you need to do it with prayers. And I believe that with the grace of God, things will be done. That happiness that is lost in your home will return there. I believe in the power of mentoring. It's not even when you get married. It is even before you get married. Ask the person you are getting married to, what, tough, what sort of books do you read? What are your strengths? What are your challenges? Let me know some things about you. Please, don't let it be about love. Oh, why do you want to marry the man? I love him. He's so tall. He, he has six packs. All these things will fade someday. The only thing that could make your marriage work is when you have purpose. When your purpose is kiss. When you agree with each other that, look, these are the things we want to do. When the love, you say, they say uh, love is blind. Lo marriage will open that blindness. And then you now have realities on your hand. It will help if you determine to mentor one another. This is all I have for you today. In my next broadcast on Wednesday next week, I want to look at how men can mentor women without running into trouble. And how young women can mentor, I mean, how young women can have mentors among men without having issues. How men can mentor women without running into troubles. And how young women can have mentor amongst men without having issues. Next week on Wednesday. I hope you have gained something today. Thank you. God be with you. Cheerio.